So, I have a short one for you today. Actually short, because I have some D&D &D with some friends shortly, but I thought I'd just highlight a series of concerns and why they should concern you. Um, and I wanted to start with this premise that when the state... Um, point something at another country, they're pointing it at you. That it's not that, you know, this tech is somehow going to be used exclusively or this legislation is going to somehow be used exclusively for the enemy. It will always be used against you. So let's start with this. And the fact that the U.S. government is literally like secretly recording the entirety of the borderlands. If you live near Mexico at all, the U.S. is watching you actively. So I thought I would uh, bring this up and uh, give you guys a glimpse into life in the borderlands. Reason Magazine put out an art article called Government Agencies Are Using Border Surveillance on Americans. Now, y'all know I've got issues with reason. I've got issues with, you know, anyone linked to the Koch brothers. But this is good. And this article uh, was very quick to elucidate its points. So it said, last week, EFF released a public map of surveillance towers in the borderlands the first time such a directory has been made available. Though it isn't complete, the map marks the positions of over 300 existing towers and roughly 50 planned ones. Quote, the tower systems are able to automatically detect and track objects up to 7.5 miles away and assist agents in classifying objects 3 miles away, depending on regional requirements, according to EFF. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, is also in the process of installing 200 autonomous surveillance towers, ASTs, from Andorral Industries that are controlled by artificial intelligence software. By the way, I have videos coming out on that soon, because holy shit, do I have a lot of rage at a lot of people who are making a lot of excuses for AI. But that's another one. Um, and those of you who've watched my content know that uh, I have very strong opinions on AI already. So keep an eye out, like, share, and subscribe. But ultimately, quote, by viewing these towers on a map, says Mus, you can really get a sense of how these towers are installed in residential communities. Be it urban or rural, and not just the remote expanses of the Southwest, the government hasn't disclosed much about the towers beyond their expense, leaving the people who study and live in the borderlands with incomplete information. The state loves asymmetrical information, by the way. But Sam Chambers, a geography and migration researcher at the University of Arizona, says that those studying surveillance in the borderlands previously, quote, had to rely on documents such as environmental impact statements or other public records to show where a tower may be or had been built. And that was limited to specific districts and had to be verified, end quote. Otherwise, researchers had to learn by word of mouth or searching for themselves. Go on a little hunty hunt and hope you don't get arrested for videotaping things the government owns. Owns. Um, because ultimately the government is very quick to crack down on people just for looking at them. Uh, there have been many videos who, where people have just been videoing installation uh, or the states like goons, their license plates, or something like that, and the government has t taken action against them or tried to intimidate them into stopping or something because the state loves their information asymmetry. But much of the surveillance happening in the borderlands occurs without the knowledge of the people living there. Last July, CBP launched a surveillance blimp over Nogales, Arizona, without first informing local officials. Quote, We weren't aware that they were going to put it up. Edward Dickey, city manager of Nogales, told Reason at the time, It has since been removed. 
CBP plans to install new surveillance towers in Imperial Beach and El Cajon, California, but officials in both cities say they were unaware of the federal government's plans, according to The Voice of San Diego. In the government's eyes, the definition of the border itself is slippery, giving it broad surveillance discretion. Federal law allows Border Patrol to conduct warrantless stops and searches within a reasonable distance from any external boundary of the United States, including on private land within 25 miles of the border. Quote, decades-old federal regulations issued without public comment or debate define that reasonable distance as 100 air miles from any external boundary, according to the Project on Government Accountability, which released a report on the border enforcement zone in January. Almost two-thirds of the American population lives within the zone. What's more, POGO found little evidence that checkpoints in enforcement zone are ensnaring undocumented immigrants. Quote, checkpoints accounted for only 2% of Border Patrol arrests between fiscal years 2016 and 20. It reported the existence of checkpoints can also lead to migrants dying in the countryside in attempts to avoid them. This cuts to one of the misconceptions about the virtual wall. It is more humane than a physical wall. Chambers notes that his past research has demonstrated that border surveillance towers force people into remote terrain where they will face excessive physical exertion and extended exposure to the elements. He says there's, quote, nothing to suggest that a virtual wall is humane, adding that surveillance tech is not necessarily distinct from a physical wall. The two work in tandem to isolate human beings and multiply the bodily and mental harm of border crossing, says Chambers. What differentiates them most is that towers have been more readily ignored by those not impacted. Border security and immigration enforcement are affecting more and more people, though. At airports, customs officials are uploading data from travelers' electronic devices to a massive database that CBP agents can file through without a warrant. In 2020, as people protested the killing of George Floyd across the country, the DHS turned border technology on them, surveilling demonstrators in over 15 cities in New York City and Philadelphia. Immigration and Customs Enforcement has access to drivers' licensed data. Smart border enforcement has come at a massive cost, something that implicates every American taxpayer. The Secure Border Initiative Network, a mid-2000s virtual fence project, came in at $1 billion by the time it was scrapped. Scrapped. $19 million for each mile it covered. In fiscal year 2022, Congress allocated $425 million for border surveillance between 1993 and in 2019, Border Patrol's budget jumped from $363 million to $4.9 billion. So, they are spying directly on residents 7.5 miles away from the border with these cameras. 7.5 fucking miles! And while they're doing that, they have just mandated uh, Real ID. Because... Real ID was already supposed to be mandated a long time ago, but they needed to refine it and make sure it was extra tyrannical. Basically, what that means is that Ron Paul's old slogan, where... But the people who want big fences and guns, sure, we could secure the borders. A barbed wire fence with machine guns, that would do the trick. I don't believe that's what America is all about. I just really don't. We can enforce our law. If we had a healthy economy, this wouldn't be such a bad deal. People are worrying about jobs. But every time you think about this toughness on the border and ID cards and real ideas, think that it's a, it's a penalty against the American people, too. I think this fence business is designed and may well be used against us and keep us in. In economic turmoil, the people want to leave with their capital and there's capital controls and there's people control. So every time you think of a fence keeping all those bad people out, think about those fences maybe being used against us keeping us in. Is coming to fruition. Um, and Real ID will now be enforced May 7th, 2025. And that means that Federal agencies, including DHS and TSA, may only accept state-issued driver's licenses and ID cards as identification for purposes of accessing federal facilities, including TSA airport security checkpoints. If the license or card was issued by a Real ID compliant state in accordance with the Real ID security standards, meaning the license or card must include the Real ID compliant star marking, enhanced driver's license 
issued by Washington, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, and Vermont are considered acceptable alternatives to Real ID compliant cards and will also be accepted for official Real ID purposes. Most EDLs do not contain the star marking, and this is acceptable. So basically, if you want to get on a plane, you now have to have a Real ID, and it's much more intrusive. And I, I thought I would start with those things um, and just hammer down to the heart of what, a, what I'm about to talk about, because the Digital Iron Curtain, how the Restrict Act threatens to devastate privacy and crush free speech online. This is going way past banning TikTok. This is another Free Thought Project article. Uh, feel free to go sub to them. Matt Agarist uh, says, in an era where the world has become more Orwellian than Orwell himself could have ever imagined, it should come as no surprise that the U.S. government is once again attempting to expand its stranglehold on individual liberty. Enter Senate Bill 686, also known as the Restricting the Emergence of Security Threats that Risk Information and Communications Technology Act. Restrict Act. You gotta love an acronym that includes one of the words <laughs> as the acronym itself. Far from being the limited TikTok ban it purports to be, the Restrict Act represents an unprecedented expansion of government power and surveillance, reaching into nearly every aspect of our digital lives. Make no mistake, this piece of legislation is the Patriot Act on steroids. The Restrict Act would seemingly grant the U.S. government total control over all devices connected to the internet, including cars, ring cameras, refrigerators, Alexa devices, and your phone. It goes beyond the pale, with the end goal being nothing short of a complete invasion of your privacy. Under the guise of national security, the Restrict Act targets not only TikTok, but all hardware, software, and mobile apps used by more than one million people. This means that anything from your Google Home device to your smartphone could be subject to government monitoring and control. Should you dare to defy the Restrict Act, you'll face devastating consequences. Violators can be slapped with a 20-year prison sentence, civil forfeiture, and denied freedom of information requests. All this, mind you, for simply trying to maintain some semblance of privacy in your own fucking home. The conspiratorial report has a running list of them, and, uh, it's a doozy. Information and communications technology, products or services used by a party to a covered transaction in a sector designated as critical infrastructure in blah blah blah, software, hardware, or any product or service integral to telecommunications products and services including wireless local networks, mobile networks, satellite payloads, satellite operations and control, cable access points, wireline access points, core networking systems, long, short, and backhaul networks or edge computer platforms, any software, hardware, or other product or service integral to data hosting or computing service that uses, processes, or retains, or is expected to use, process, or retain sensitive personal data with respect to greater than one million persons in the United States at any point during the year period preceding the date on which the covered transaction is referred to the Secretary for review, or the Secretary initiates review of the covered transaction, including internet hosting services, cloud-based or distributed computing and data storage, machine learning, predictive analytics, and data science products and services, including those involving the provision of services to assist a party to utilize, manage, or maintain open source software, managed services, and content delivery services, internet or network-enabled sensors, webcams, endpoint surveillance, or monitoring devices, modems and home networking devices if greater than one million units have been sold to persons in the U.S. at any point during the year period preceding the date on which the covered transaction is referred to the Secretary for review or the Secretary initiates review of the covered transaction, and unmanned vehicles including drones and other aerial systems, autonomous or semi-autonomous vehicles, or any other product or service integral to the provision, maintenance, or management of such products or services, and software designed or used primarily for connecting with and communicating via the internet that is in use 
by greater than 1 million persons in the U.S. at any point during the year period preceding the date on which the covered transaction is referred to the Secretary for review or the Secretary initiates review of the covered transaction, including desktop apps, mobile apps, gaming apps, payment apps, web-based apps, or information and communications technology uh, products and services integral to artificial intelligence and machine learning, quantum key distribution, quantum communications, quantum computing, post-quantum cryptography, autonomous systems, advanced robotics, biotechnology, synthetic biology, computational biology, and e-commerce technology and services, including any electronic techniques for accomplishing business transactions, online retail, internet-enabled logistics, internet-enabled payment technology, and online marketplaces. So basically, fucking everything. The insidious nature of the Restrict Act does not stop there. As reported by Under the Desk News, the bill's proponents are also seeking to undermine Section 230 and limit free speech. The implications are clear. This legislation is not about protecting Americans, but rather about stripping away our rights and liberties. The list of supporters for this draconian bill reads like a who's who of big government cheerleaders, and like all attacks on freedom, it has bipartisan support. Among them are Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, Senator John Thune, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, and nine Democratic co-sponsors such as Hillary Clinton's former VP pick Tim Kaine and U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin. So, basically... They're using TikTok, um, maybe spying on behalf of the Chinese government, as an excuse to spy on everything you do. Sound familiar? Well, it should sound familiar, because that's exactly what they did with the war on terror in the Middle East. And um, just to be clear, the new thing that they're supporting, like they supported the, um, the Mujahideen and Operation Cyclone and all this fucking uh, support they've given them, for years and years now, that thing they're doing, they're now doing it with Ukrainian Nazis. Um, they're supporting those people, and they have since the 60s. And everything those Ukrainian Nazis are doing, like banning press, closing churches, um, you know, jailing dissidents, that's all U.S. government-approved activity, and they will do it to you too. Which is why uh, it's real fucking suspicious. It's kind of sus only verified accounts who, who like, subscribe to fucking Musk's Know Your Customer Twitter blue thing will be able to vote in Twitter polls um, and appear in For You. They're just dwindling the amount that you can do without telling everybody your government ID information. And um, Meta Verified is a thing now, which means that they might be slowly tightening that news too, saying unless you give us your government ID, you can't use Meta. Maybe because all of these services are controlled by big government people who would want to be able to link your ID, your ID that is now mandatory for base existence in the U.S. and even leaving the joint, um, your ID, which will be connected to CBDC coming up here, just like I've been saying, your ID, which will be connected to your facial recognition ID, that it will be monitored by AI, your ID that I have been warning everybody about basically being the mark of the beast, your ID will be required for your social media. And your social media will be monitored by the state. And the state will have an unelected board of bureaucrats deciding whether or not you can continue to use your services or whether or not you are going to spend 20 years in jail for saying something they didn't like. And if you ask me, this is the most evil shit that they have pulled because a significant amount of people are going to support it just because fuck China, especially with all the rabble that's being roused over China supporting Russia. Because if you say Russia, you can get away with anything. So, I thought I would let you know that everything they point at another country, they will also point at you. And you should be concerned. And you should be angry every single time this happens. Instead of letting their xenophobic, jingoistic, bigoted fucking propaganda get to you and get you to co-sign it. Plain and simple. All the more reason to smash the fucking stick.